Today's vocabulary topic is environment and conservation. It's not one of my favourite topics. I always found it very boring at school. Um, but let's get on with it. Um, the first potential threat to the environment which I could think of was smog, which is like sm a combination of two words, smoke and fog and so it's air pollution um, you get a lot of smog in the big cities where there's a lot of traffic um, a lot of factories and so there's a lot of uh, toxic gases which go up into the atmosphere toxic is quite a good word as well you can see it here um, it means poisonous um, so if you get a lot of poisonous gases in the air you get a lot of smog um, it's obviously harmful to the environment and nobody likes it um, deforestation is simply the cutting down of trees uh, at an industrial scale so that um, there's not much forest left and of course one of the results of this um, is soil erosion um, a lot of the soil gets eroded by the rain afterwards by the precipitation and uh, erosion is a word which means this weathering by water or by rain it could be by the sea we talk about beach erosion as well and yeah or, or the erosion of the sides of a river as the water goes down it the water erodes the banks of the river um, so it's a good word to remember um, overpopulation is another potential threat which um, people often speak about they speak about the population growing to such a, a, a a large degree that things become unsustainable life becomes unsustainable people over consume finite resources we start to use too much oil or too much gas or perhaps just um, consume too much food so that we don't have enough food left and one of the results of this could be famine which came up in another lesson I believe in weather famine which is when which is widespread hunger it's when there's not enough food in one area so that could be a consequence of overpopulation or overconsumption um, also we talk about the extinction of endangered species for example tigers in a lot of areas are facing extinction um, you can also say tigers are dying out which also came up in another lesson um, so of course an endangered species is a species like the tiger which is facing extinction um, next we come on to one which is always in the news anthropogenic climate change I put this word in because it means man-made climate change this just means climate change which comes from man usually it's attributed to carbon emissions too much carbon dioxide um, and it's to make it different from the other obvious form of climate change which is simply the Sun um, because the climate obviously does change we have ice ages and we have warmer periods and so anthropogenic just makes it clear that you're talking about the kind of climate change which is a direct result of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere anyway um, it's not something which concerns me global warming is another word for climate change and this is supposed to be an irreversible process what this means is that it cannot be um, reversed it cannot be turned around once the planet starts warming it's going to continue getting hotter and hotter and hotter um, the next one dumping of toxic or nuclear waste in various places maybe at the bottom of the ocean um, of course this does lead to the ocean becoming toxic becoming well it's been poisoned with this nuclear waste and so it's another um, environmental concern the burning of fossil fuels is supposed to increase the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and thereby lead to climate change so it's another thing which is um, very often considered an environmental threat widespread flooding could be the result of um, climate change and we have widespread flooding every year anyway due to the weather um, genetically modified food is any kind of food which has been genetically modified which has been um, changed in some kind of way in the laboratory um, the genes of the food have been changed um, perhaps to improve the yield perhaps to get more uh, a, a, a bigger yield or a, perhaps to change the actual product um, anyway it's a concern for a lot of people because um, it may have health uh, consequences it may have dire consequences for your health dire consequences means really bad consequences okay really terrible consequences 
So they often talk about reducing carbon emissions. I believe the European Union are always talking about reducing carbon emissions for businesses. You can also refer this to um, a carbon footprint. They talk about your carbon footprint now. And, um, you know, they talk about reducing the amount of carbon you produce by having less children and things like that. Because, of course, that would mean you're using far, you're producing far less carbon dioxide by having less children. Um, OK, let's move over here. Um, we talk about the disposal of household waste. Usually now this is done. Um, some of the household waste is recycled so plastic packaging and um, paper can be recycled and certainly here in England we put the rubbish in different coloured bags in order to recycle some whether that's a good idea or not I have no idea being honest I don't know if it costs more if it's you know if it actually a lot of um, time and money and effort is spent on it and it's not worth it I don't know but um, we also talk about biodegradable waste and non-biodegradable waste. Biodegradable waste can be broken down by the environment when it's thrown away. So a banana skin, if you throw it away in the forest or an apple, it's going to degrade. It's going to, it's, it's not non-biodegradable, it's biodegradable. It's going to degrade and rot and turn into its constituent um, atoms. Um, non-biodegradable is things like plastics, which don't degrade over time in the forest they just remain as they are they aren't broken down they don't rot or decay and they're two good words here um, dead bodies would rot or decay and food would rot or decay but plastic bags wouldn't rot or decay although I don't know again over millions of years maybe it does I don't know um, okay we spoke about dire consequences terrible consequences we, there's a good phrase over here, run out of. There, when I was at school, I was told that we would run out of oil in about 20 years' time. And this was a good 30 years ago, because I, I remember I was a very little boy at the time. And um, I went to the same school that my daughter now goes to, and I see that they're still saying that they're still teaching the same thing, which is that we're going to run out of oil in about 20 years. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily the case, but they're still um, teaching this in schools here. Um, we have alternative energy or renewable energy sources. Um, this would be a renewable energy source. These are non-renewable. What that means is they're finite. They're finite resources. Um, renewable energy would mean energy which is constantly around, like the sun, the wind, or the tide. Um, so if it's from the sun we call it solar power we also talk about wind farms which in my opinion are an eyesore um, eyesore just means a very ugly building or construction and I think they look rather ugly wind farms and I've heard that they kill a lot of birds as well that fly into the propeller blades um, okay and tidal power would be something which um, collects energy from the tide and this is something which you definitely need to know about if you come to my town because in my town we have a very big difference between high tide and low tide so twice a day you see the tide go out and and come in again and uh, when it goes out it goes out very far a good few kilometers so that you can't actually see much of the sea you can just see it very very far off with a few large boats going on it but the difference is massive and so um, the the times for high tide and low tide are well known by everybody when they look in the papers before you go to the beach you check when the tide's going to be in so that you can swim otherwise there's going to be no water there and you'll have to walk out a good three kilometers on the mud if you want to swim some other words related to sea here um, the coast is obviously it's it's actually only a part of the um, sea which is it's actually where the land meets the ocean the coast the shore can even be on the side of an estuary or river but the coast is only um, where the land meets the ocean now my beach isn't really a coast because it's not where the land meets the ocean it's my beach is on the estuary of the river Thames estuary means the mouth of a river and so my shore because shore is anything um, it's actually on the estuary of the river Thames and that's what estuary means we also talk about a cove a bay or a gulf this is very small and it just means a part of the water which kind of goes like that so you have the beach here and the water comes in so it's it's a slightly bigger one would be called a bay 
um, but a small one would be called a cove and a very big one like the Gulf of Mexico would be a gulf okay so they're kind of increasing in size as we go that way um, peninsula just means almost an island so it's a piece of land which kind of comes out again I'm drawing it very much like a bay but like Greece Greece has a peninsula at the bottom of the country I think it used to be called Sparta I have no idea what it's called now forgive me if you're Greek and you're watching at home but this part is a peninsula it's connected to the mainland by a very thin strip so some other famous peninsulas would be the Crimea um, or well, perhaps that's enough the Crimea or Sparta in Greece they're famous peninsulas um, onto river rivers have a source which is where the water comes from they have a mouth which is where the water flows out into the sea and they have tributaries which mean little little uh, rivers that come off the main river yeah L little ones coming off the main river um, also yeah, a river in the middle of the mountains um, very often we call this a valley any flat land in between the mountains would be called a valley but a river going between two high cliff edges would be called a ravine and a very big ravine would be called a gorge and so again they're pretty similar things but they're increasing in size as we go across lastly mountains um, if you have a mountain ridge it just means the high point when you're walking up the mountain sometimes you have a very high point between with two sharp edges going down on each way that would be a mountain ridge okay when you've got two sharp edges on each way it's not the same as a peak or summit which just means the top of the mountain and the foot would be the bottom of the mountain ridge would be kind of here where it's going across and you've got a drop going down on each side okay glacier is just the uh, type of mountain where the waters where the ice is at the top and it's melting and it's very often the source of a river or two okay um, I've probably made a few mistakes there this isn't my favorite topic as I've <laughs> said before but um, please if you have any questions about this topic ask under the video and I'll do my best to answer all of them thanks for watching